Okay, so here we go. I am going to skip over me fitting and setting in the wrist pins because I'm sick and tired of dealing with the shitty comments that I've gotten on how I am doing this wrong. I am not showing you everything that I do with this engine because it is too time consuming and people won't watch when I do the fine details of the work that needs to be done to this motor. This is not a tutorial on how to overhaul an engine. This is just me overhauling an engine and you get to see the main parts of it. So with that being said, please just sit back and enjoy what you see. Keep your negative bullshit comments to yourself because I'm getting kind of tired of it. If you want to see the full version, and when I say the full version, I'm going to post the full version on Patreon uh, in the coming, probably this week. And that's just the way it works. If you don't like it, too bad. If you want to see the whole thing, and with me setting the wrist pins in and fitting the wrist pins, if I've got that on film, then uh, you can pay to see it. Thanks for watching.
here I am saying okay again. All right, so I have my liners in the uh, in the uh, in the block. Uh, I, before I did, I had set down, and I don't think I got it on film because I'm actually a few days later, and I can't remember what I filmed. But uh, yeah, it's kind of funny, huh? Anyway, so I have all six liners in. They were fit before I put the gaskets on, and it says to use soap, so I used the liquid soap there. Uh, don't use an oil because you just don't want that on there. Uh, when I use the soap, that stuff has a little bit of a corrosive property to it, and it will rust these liners, and it doesn't really make too much of a difference on the uh, on the inside of that engine block, but it will make a difference on, and I don't think you can see those liners. No, you can't, not through there, uh, because of the water jacket. But anyway, so what I've done, and it did, it, it put a little bit of a surface rust, and that was yesterday that I did that. This stuff is amazing, and I, I really, I don't think I would use palm olive again if I was going to do it. Uh, soft on hand, tough on grease, soft on hands, and that's what it said in the instructions to use. Uh, I've used ivory soap before the last time I've done this, and I am a little disappointed that it has got some surface rust, but it is really, really kind of damp right now. Uh, it's kind of damp in the shop here because we are in a heat wave. It is like it hit like 60 degrees today. And uh, I just was blown away as to uh, how hot it really got. But what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I am just uh, douching this thing down with some uh, liquid wrench that my neighbor Jack, Wacky Jack, or Jack, has given us. We call him Wacky Jack. He probably doesn't like it, but, you know, we like him a lot. He's a good guy. Uh, anyway... <laughs> He uh, he gave me this. I forget what I had given him, and he gave me that because it's a give and take relationship around here. You give a little and take a lot. Isn't that how that works? Or you know, try to give equal amounts. Uh, but anyways, now that these liners are in, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the rings on these pistons. Now I'm not going to be putting the pistons in the in the block tonight because. I still don't have my bearings and Sean out at Deer Country is trying really hard to get these, these bearings exchanged out because they gave me standards. There is a discrepancy in the website, A&I's website and John Deere's website. A&I is a subsidiary or uh, affiliate of John Deere and John Deere you can buy the A&I kit through John Deere, oh, Teresa's texting me. and. Uh, you can buy that kit through John Deere and through their website, and it states one thing. And Sean actually went to the ANI website or called ANI, and ANI said, "No, no, no, you can't do that. You got to order it through our website, even though it's the same damn thing." It, the difference is, on the John Deere website, it stated that all the bearings were going to be in there. On the ANI website, you had to specify, which is traditionally what I'm used to. So when you when you purchase a kit like this, you need to un, uh, you need to state whether it's an oversized bearing, undersized bearing, whatever size bearing. It just really needs to you need to uh, state that uh, on when you're ordering it. And through John Deere, if I was to buy a John Deere kit, uh, which John Deere's kit was very expensive and was not didn't include anything. You had to actually build a kit for this block through John Deere. That's why I didn't just buy a John Deere engine overhaul kit because you just can't do that. It's not that simple. It's actually quite difficult and shocking to be quite honest with you. Uh, I thought that John Deere should have you know, had these kits all put together and ready to go, and you just specify the bearings, but you, you they don't do that. You actually have to, okay, buy the sleeves, buy the thrust, buy the rod, buy the mains, buy the, you know, all these different bearings. Oh, and by the way, you have to buy the gasket kit separately, and you can't buy the whole gas, complete gasket kit. You have to buy the head gasket kit, and then you have to buy a oil pan gasket kit, which comes with that kit. So, 
that, that I hope answers a couple of your questions. And I know there were some questions out there as to, you know, what to do, you know, why I didn't buy the John Deere kit, why I ended up with the A and I, even though A and I is a subsidiary of John Deere or an affiliate of John Deere, they, you know, they just had a better option for the kit. Now, I'm not going to work with this tractor every day of my life. This is just a, uh, uh, I would just call it a nostalgia tractor. If I need to work it, it will run, and it'll run all day, every day, if I have to. But, you know, it's not something that I'm depending on, you know, all day, every day. It just isn't. I've got a whole host of different tractors, in, even in this shop. Uh, the 5020, the 60, the 4320. That 4320, I could start it up and go to work. You know, there are things that need to be done, but that 4320 is in pretty damn good shape. I did the bearings on that a couple years ago, uh, and all it needs right now is a seat, which is behind me here, or over there, or where the hell is it? Yeah, it's right here. And uh, the seat and the seat kit and the muffler, which is sitting on the Articat. So, the, and it can go right to work, and we'll be doing well with it. So I guess I've yammered on long enough about this and as to where I'm going with it. And tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's Friday. Uh, this video is going to be much later. I'm getting behind on my videos because I'm doing a lot more detailed work now, which is interesting to see how it comes along. And uh, yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to give John Deere a call and find out where the hell my bearings are. And what I'm going to do is actually pull these plugs out. Hold on. These are these are the oil galleys or galleries or whatever you want to call them. I'm going to pull those out and blow some air through there. Make sure that that's clean. Because if that's not clean, it could cause trouble on the, on the overhaul. Which I don't think there's going to be any trouble. Just because there's a plug here that goes to the oil cooler, I think. Oh, yeah, the oil cooler on that one. Now, what the hell does that go to? Uh...